What's up guys, my name is Brandon from Gearist.com. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the energy in our number two from Newton Running. You know, one of the most exciting things that we get to see here at Gearist is the evolution of products from one model year to the next. Whether, you know, version one of a product is so much different than version two. Whether those things are good choices, bad choices, or kind of just vertical moves. We were really excited to get our hands on the Energy NR2 since the last shoe that we reviewed from Newton was the Energy NR1. Being that that's the case, it seems only poetic that this is the next Newton we get our hands on. So let's get right into it. As we always do with running shoes, the first place we're gonna look is the outsole of this shoe. Now, if you're not familiar with Newton running shoes, then you may be looking at this going, what is that? It looks kind of like a foot. Well, the way that Newton running shoes work is that this little chunk right here is considered the action reaction, the five lugs. Now, prior to just a couple years ago, it was only four lugs in the setup that Newton used. And now it's primarily five lugs that they use all across their shoes with a couple of exceptions here or there. We're not gonna get very deep into that part of this whole technology right now, but just know that that's what that is and we'll come back to it a little bit later. Now. The rubber that you can see here, this is rubber up here, these are all the blue is rubber and all this kind of stuff, and Newton actually has a new rubber. Now, it used to be that they would use something that was just a carbon rubber compound, it was as simple as that. However, these days, Newton seems to be very fond of the acronym, so this is now SHARK rubber, super high abrasion rubber compound. Now, I believe that this portion right here is that shark rubber, and I think probably up into the lugs though, I cannot be sure. The remainder of the rubber that we have on the outsole here is that just traditional blown rubber that Newton and most other shoe companies are gonna use in non-high abrasion areas. Right over here, this mid-foot sole section right here, this is where there's gonna be a pretty significant change from version one of the Energiner, or the Energy in R, to version two. And the first one of those things is that you'll notice if you can see, actually right here we'll put a picture of the bottom of the Energy in R1, and you can notice that it's got that full rubber plate. This whole entire section is fully rubber. Now we're gonna get to this little guy right here in a second. This is the EMB or the Extended Medial Bridge. Now again, Newton seems to be very fond of acronyms these days, so EMB says so right there. Now where you saw the remainder of that rubber, you can still see kind of the remnants, the heritage of that kind of midfoot strike plate that was on the version one of this shoe. Now it's solely been replaced by exposed EVA foam right in this area right here. Now in the durability section of a lot of shoes, we do question that kind of exposed EVA foam. But you know, Newton does definitely espouse a certain type of very clean running mechanics, a very clean running gait. So if you're running with a very efficient gait, this is not necessarily going to be an issue, particularly since it's a pretty low, sort of low traffic area. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more in the durability section. But now let's talk about the extended medial bridge, the EMB right here. Now, Prior to, let's say, 2013 sometime, any and all Newton stability features were made up by a denser foam, a slightly higher durometer foam, EVA foam, that ran from roughly right about here, kind of the front slash middle-ish of the heel, up to under the first metatarsal head. Now this is very important because Newton espouses midfoot, forefoot running, okay? Very natural running. And if you hit the heel first, so what? We're not getting into that today. It doesn't really matter. Well, what they espouse is this very under your center of mass style of running. And what happens in that instance is that late stage pronation is what any and all stability would account for. Not early stage pronation, which would take place back here, basically a crashing out of the ankle at the first part of the gait cycle. What's interesting about that, and having been very closely tied to the entire Newton running company at some point in time, is that it was always explained to me and to everybody else for that matter, that the reason that that foam extended up under the first metatarsal head is because that's where any and all imbalances would take place. Whether you had a raised or shortened, shortened first metatarsal head, that's going to account for any late stage pronation or crashing in toward the medial side of the foot. The first thing about the extended medial bridge is that the Energy NR was not a stability shoe of any sort when it first came out. Now it just kind of seems to be, magically, it's just all of a sudden denoted as a stability shoe. I'm not really quite sure why, but that's okay. Now, the thing about the extended medial bridge, and this is the case in all Newton shoes that contain the EMB, is that it stops shy of the first metatarsal head. I'm not really sure why that is. I'm not sure what the mechanical advantage of it is, or if it's simply just kind of a placebo thing. In any event, it doesn't 
carry that support forward under the first metatarsal head. Now, being that I am a very neutral runner and I actually supinate, I only run in neutral shoes, so I was kind of surprised when I got this, but I have to tell you that it really didn't affect me negatively in any way, which is different because, again, being very closely tied to the Newton Corporation in the past, I have run in their stability shoes and other companies' stability shoes, and any time that I do, my knee, lateral knee, all of a sudden like fires off out of nowhere. It's very strange, and so I stay away from those. But this really didn't affect that, which on one hand is great for those of you that like the ride of a neutral energy in R, although Newton does have an alternative for that, but it also means that it's not really doing a whole ton to prop up that first metatarsal head. Again, we're probably just gonna review this as though it's a neutral shoe. Now back to talking about the rubber, that shark rubber compound that's going on here on the outsole. One of the advantages or the advertised advantages of that is that it does really well in wet and dry conditions. I found that the shoe handled really well on wet and dry surfaces. However, I question whether it's the shark rubber taking care of that or whether it's the very fine lines that you can see carried all across the shoe. There are these fine kind of knurling lines that go across all of that. I think that easily has just as much, if not more, to do with traction than the rubber itself. Now, from a durability perspective, I have roughly right now about 30 miles on this shoe. And as you can see here, I'll try to hold it up to the camera, this medial, ex or lateral rather, exposed EVA foam is showing a bit of wear there. Now, to me, not such a huge deal. I do have a pretty clean gait, you know, uh, maybe it's that I was getting pushed onto the lateral side a little bit more by the EMB here. I'm not really sure. I would expect, generally speaking, for people to get roughly 400 miles out of the shoe. And the other thing about this being exposed on that lateral side and in a full contact sole, you can see this is meant to contact the ground fully front to back, is that when you land in this shoe, you probably know, if you're running in Newton shoes, exactly how Newton would like you to run in those shoes. And what that means is that you're gonna come in on that midfoot, most likely, sometimes you'll come in on the heel, but whatever. You'll come in on that midfoot, most likely, or on the forefoot, and when you come in, 99% of people are gonna come in kind of either very flat or on that lateral side, which is very likely going to wear that a little bit. Not a huge deal, definitely not a deal breaker for me, and I can easily see myself getting probably 700 miles out of this. I typically get more in the more performance-oriented Newton models I have gotten in the past, roughly a thousand miles, give or take. Now the midsole of the Energy NR2 is made from a single density EVA foam. And here's something that's interesting about the drop because, you know, as people like to look at Newtons, they look at the drop because that's very important to people that are shopping in natural running shoes. They advertise it here, you can see right there, it's written on the side of the shoe, that is a six millimeter drop. However, Running Warehouse, which does all their own independent measurements, measured it at four millimeters. Now, to be very honest, it's quite difficult to tell a two millimeter difference when you're just kind of standing. It's very difficult to tell two millimeter difference. Let's just put it there, so. Now, being that the last shoe we reviewed from Newton was the Energy NR number one, that was prior to Newton's introduction of its POP system, its point of power. Now, however, all of Newton's shoes are designated POP 3, 2, or 1. POP 3 being the kind of gateway shoe, the least poppy shoe. And this, rel this relates to the action reaction technology. We're going to touch on that in a second. Pop 2 is that middle ground shoe where it's not your gateway shoe, but it does have more pop, a little more performance oriented, but it's still great for kind of rocking up long, hard miles. Then you've got your Pop 1 shoes, which are your more performance oriented shoes. And this is where you're going to find shoes like your gravities and your motion and things like that. Shoes that have been in the Newton line as a top end performance shoe since their inception in 2007. We're going to come back to the action reaction technology here one one second, we're just going to kind of talk about the midsole in general. Now, relative to the first energy in R, this is a much more firm shoe, and I really like that. I'm not saying it's a harsh ride by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a more firm shoe, and it gives you better ground feel because it's not deadening that feel. This really gives a better sense of the ground and actually gives you the ability to kind of torque down on it a little more. Now, as that relates to the action reaction technology, which we see right here. Now, first, obviously, Yes, this part is single density EVA, but when you get in here, you've got a different system. Now, under here, if I could cut it away, I would show you, but under each of these lugs, there's an entire chamber that has this kind of PU foam, polyurethane foam in it. This is a very resilient foam, which is meant to respond. When you land on these with your metatarsal heads, these lugs are meant to sink into that polyurethane foam, and you're gonna feel that pop kind of coming back to you. Hence the name Point of Power, the acronym POP. What I found very interesting about the Energy in R2 is that 
the lungs don't do much. There's not a lot of expression of that pop. Now, I understand that this is a gateway shoe. If you're somebody who's coming into Newton's for the first time and you go straight into a performance shoe, it could have the kind of tendency to really throw you a bit. And for somebody wanting that general, kind of really gentle introduction into the product line, that's probably not a bad way to go for some. You know, they want to kind of be you know, walked in slowly. You're definitely very aware of the lug system as you would be, you would figure, since there are these things underneath your metatarsal heads, but you're not going to really get that super pop like you might find from something in the pop two or pop one uh, categories. The reason it probably feels a little bit foreign to me is because I used to only run in Newton performance models. Um, that's where I stayed, in the gravity and in the distance. Those are kind of my go-to shoes. However, since this is the shoe that we're checking out right now, it does juxtapose really interestingly, and you really definitely notice that difference from something that's not nearly as poppy as those air-filled chambers or hollow chambers that are in the shoes higher up the line. In the first generation of the Energy NR, Newton actually began to move away from the mesh that had so ubiquitously defined its shoes up to that point. It moved into something that was kind of a thick dual layer mesh. It wasn't the, the greatest thing in the world, but it was an interesting move away from where they had been since to that time. In the Energy in R2, Newton has done a fantastic job with sourcing this mesh. This is still a dual layered mesh, but it's much, much thinner. And while it's still not the most breathy thing in the world, it's definitely got a lot of good airflow. As with most other brands, Newton is beginning to experiment with engineered mesh that you can see here, kind of, kind of an engineered weave that you can see right there. The entire support structure of the upper is made from, as you may be able to see here, these kind of darker blue areas. These are made from heat bonded microfiber overlays that are creating that structure. This again, as we've told, talked about in myriad other shoes, creates a really slick look, but it also makes a really strong shoe because it's all kind of in one compact area. One of the places where I think this is a really great thing, especially for people that are just getting into the Newton shoe line and tend to overstride and land like this, which is not good, is they've really reinforced the toe cap with that. And it's gonna kind of, hopefully anyway, prevent blowouts in the, the toe area. The heel counter in this shoe is definitely pretty rigid, it forms a nice heel cup, and it really sinks the foot in there very nicely. It feels good when you're in there. And speaking of that, the collar here actually almost feels kind of like neoprene, although a little bit smoother. Great amount of foam right there, feels very, very comfortable, even around a no-show sock or no sock at all. Now, the throat has a lot of room for expansion. We're gonna talk a little bit about this in the fit section in one second. The final thing on this shoe that I will point out that I really do like is it's 360 degree reflectivity. Now, you can see here along the foxing where it says Newton right along the back there, this is reflective, as are these two little kind of semi-triangles right on either side of the toe cap. Now, you would think that you would have some reflectivity on either side, but this, I'm assuming, is meant to be reflected from the side either because you can kind of see it coming like that, you know. So if there's a car, coming you can see it from this angle if you're coming at a car you can see it from this angle so good 360 degree reflectivity on that let's talk about the fit real quick now one of the things that's great about this is that this is a size 11 it fits me spot on where I would expect a size 11 to be now in the past Newton has had some really significant sizing issues people having to kind of go up well do I go up a half size do I go up a full size they've had some issues in that area but they seem to have resolved that so that's very good another interesting thing I'd like to say while we're on this is that this has kind of got a little bit of a weight gain. It's very interesting. Now, in a men's size 9, the Energy in our version 1 weighed 8.6 ounces, and in this version, the Energy in our 2, it weighs 8.8 .8 ounces. Yes, it's 0.2 ounces of difference, but it's interesting to me because this is a reimagined, kind of re-engineered, very much more lightweight upper, but somehow it's still gained weight. I'm not sure whether that is. Maybe it's just kind of a manufacturing tolerance thing. In any event, just a hair lighter or heavier, not a big deal. And now let's talk about the actual fit of the shoe. We'll start at the back here. As I mentioned earlier, the heel cup is really great. My foot feels very nice and comfortable in there. The padding around the collar is excellent. As we move into the midfoot, one of the things that I notice is that it feels a little bit narrow-ish. Now, I'm not calling it narrow, but it just feels like here right under the medial arch and here under the lateral arch, it feels like it's very close to my foot in that area. This is especially interesting because in this shoe, Newton has added some width to it. They've added four millimeters of width to it, but when I put the shoes sole to sole, I found that that ad added width really only takes place up here in the forefoot. That adds a little bit of extra kind of side to side stability and things like that. 
but it doesn't really apply back here. And so it feels, again, a little bit narrow-ish, not narrow, and there's plenty of room for expansion in the throat, plenty of room here with the tongue, and definitely since you've got like 84 feet of extra laces, you've got more than enough room to snug this bad boy down if you need to. So again, I'm not calling this shoe narrow, but if you do have a wider foot, it's probably worth trying on. And I, I have a feeling that that narrow feeling is just that. It's just a feeling and that this isn't actually a narrow shoe. Now, arriving at the forefoot of the shoe, this is an interesting area to me. Now, if we just look at it just straight on, it actually looks kind of narrow-ish, kind of closed off, but it's not. There's actually plenty of room inside for the toes to display and wiggle and all that kind of stuff. I'd like to, as I say, with 99% of shoes, see a little bit more room maybe on that kind of lateral toe box area. But one thing always kind of stood out to me, and I couldn't really put my finger on it. Then I was having a conversation with somebody else who had also run in the shoe a lot, and they noticed that it just kind of seemed not sloppy, that's, an af that's really not the right term, but it seems as though the forefoot was an afterthought. It seems like the rest of it is really well done, really well put together, and they're just like, well, let's just do the traditional, you know, fit in the forefoot and throw this new mesh on it. And I'm not opposed to it. It feels good. Again, there's plenty of room for toe splay. There's fully, plenty of room for the foot to move around. It has a little bit of stretch to it and all that kind of stuff but it doesn't seem as dialed as I hope that it will be in the future. Let's talk about the ride of this bad boy. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the midsole is definitely more firm, and I like that. You do get more kind of return from the shoe. You feel that kind of, that ground feel. You feel more connected, and like you can really torque it a little bit more. I like that. It's a good ride, not harsh. I definitely recommend trying it on, and, and you'll probably really enjoy it also. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the pop three lugs that we've got here, the kind of entry, gateway, midsole, Action reaction technology that's right here it doesn't really pop very much there's just not a lot of it you're certainly well aware that you're on those forefoot lugs but this doesn't really give you that return if I had my druthers I would probably opt for something in the pop 2 line the kismet or the fate neither of which I've tried but I'm assuming that pop 2 means that there's well more pop Overall though, I really do think the ride on this is an improvement over version one of this shoe. Now at $110, this is actually the lowest price point in the Newton lineup, or you can actually find it for $85 right now at Roadrunner Sports. Just look down in the description, you can check out the link. At that $110, it still may be more than a lot of people are willing to spend on a shoe, but it's really actually right kind of in the center of the market there. Now, it's certainly a far cry from Newton's top end, which is $175. As I mentioned before, I'm not sure that I would go anywhere near qualifying the Energy NR2 as a stability shoe at all. However, I do foresee a naming or classification change in its future, but it's just not a stability shoe for me. If you're looking for a little bit more kind of uh, firmness, kind of presence of midsole under that in, uh, medial arch right there, you're probably gonna feel that. But apart from that, there's no real traditional stability, or as there's been in other Newton shoes before this. I do think this is a really good update. Is there room to grow? Sure. Most of which being that kind of really dialing in the forefoot of the upper and getting a little more pop in those lugs. I mean, this is just kind of, it just doesn't do much for me. And again, I will say the kind of caveat that I am used to running in much more poppy Newton running shoes, but these aren't that. So if you're somebody who's looking for that introduction into that Newton line into that pop feeling, this is probably going to be a good choice for you. I certainly recommend going to your local run shop, trying them on, or you can order them through, again, like something like Roadrunner Sports, which we've got linked here, and they will definitely work with you on returns and exchanges. So guys, our question for you today is, have you tried any of the Newton Pop 1, 2, or 3 shoes? And if you've tried them, what do you think about that rating system? Does it really resonate with you? Leave your comments in the comments section down below. Guys, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with us today. And if you've got a second, please help support Gearus by clicking on our Amazon link down there, or you can find one, I think, kind of on our website. You can go to gearus.com slash Amazon, go shop there. Any of our Roadrunner Sports, EVO, REI, all these links like that, it really helps support us if you guys shop there. It doesn't cost you anything else, but when you buy some awesome deal that you see there, we get a little bit of a kickback from that. It's really awesome, so we appreciate that. Don't forget the series that we've got going on right now. Number one, we've got the Gearist Podcast, which we've got an episode coming out 
I think the same time that this one is. Sorry, got a bit excited there and almost choked. Our podcast is where we interview gear developers, product developers, guys from different companies that have built products, people that are CEOs of companies. We get into the heads of where these people came up with these ideas, where their brands are headed, and what they see in their future. So definitely join us in the Gears podcast, which you can find on our site, gears.com. You can also find here on our YouTube channel or click over to iTunes, which you can see that button right here, and you can definitely find it there as well. Our second series is Ask Gearist. If you've got any questions, don't forget to let us know. Our latest episode, no matter when you're watching this, is our how to change a road bike tire. This is a very important skill for you to know, so definitely check that out right now. As always, please don't forget to visit Gearist.com and check us out on all our social media outlets, which you can see right over here. Strava, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and always YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That also is a super big help and you find out when we've got promotions and all that kind of stuff coming up. Thank you guys so much for spending a few minutes with us today and we'll see you next time.